Several weeks ago, I produced a video on the construction and design of these uh, in-feed and out-feed extension tables for my bandsaw. And I designed these tables uh, for my AccuSlice system. I was concerned about supporting my long rails so that they didn't sag and uh, wouldn't get as much vibration. And the system actually exceeded my expectations. It not only supports the end of the rails, but my system runs much smoother and less vibration. As a result, my cuts are much smoother. Uh, also, I, I was able to use a system for ripping long boards. Normally in the past, when I rip a board, you get to the end and the board would drop off the end. Well, now I have a table to support that board as I'm ripping, so it's a much safer way to rip uh, longer boards. But the system's kind of bulky. You know, I, I use some aluminum rails here, and uh, it's kind of big. And I'm looking to, to put this on my bandsaw that I take to trade shows. And I want something smaller and modular that I can take on and off the bandsaw quite easily. So I took my initial design, and I went to the SketchUp software, and I started redesigning it. And I came up with a new design, much simpler. It basically uses two angle irons. These angle irons have a series of holes in them to enable them to be mounted on the sides of your bandsaw, and then additional holes to mount some MDF boards. And it has a slot here for your miter bar on your bandsaw. And then in addition, when these are, after these are mounted, you can put different size tables on. I can put a, a table like I have here for my AccuSlice system. I could put a larger table. But actually, when I, when I do this myself, I'm going to make a smaller table. I designed this for a six foot rail, but most of the time in my shop I'm using a, either a three foot or a five foot rail. So I'm going to design this a little bit shorter for a five foot rail. I'm going to design my table tops a little bit smaller with rounded corners just to make it easier to get in and around the bandsaw. But you can put any size table on. You could put a wide table or you know, a short table or even a longer table. Whenever I begin a new project, I prefer to design my projects using software. For my wood turning projects, I normally use a software package such as Woodturner Pro. For the construction of a new system project, I use a CAD package such as SketchUp. Designing a project on the computer saves time and material when I actually start construction. In other words, I make and correct my mistakes on the computer before I begin the actual construction. To design the extension tables for my Laguna bandsaw, I did use a SketchUp three-dimensional CAD package. This is the completed design. I'm only shown the in-feed extension table mounted on the bandsaw. However, when I build the system, I will use the same dimensions to construct the out-feed extension table on the reverse side of my bandsaw. Here I'm showing the exploded view of all the components for the in-feed extension table. Shown on the far right is the bandsaw table with the miter bar slot. The first component of the extension table is the aluminum angle iron. This aluminum angle iron is one and a half inches tall by two and a half inches wide by one eighth of an inch thick. For my tables I cut this angle iron to 16 inches long but you can make it longer if needed. The aluminum angle iron has holes on the upright arm which will be used to attach it to the bandsaw table. The holes on the bottom rail will be used to attach the MDF tables. The other components consist of two sheets of 3 quarter inch thick MDF for the tabletop, a smaller MDF board under the base to add additional support, and a small aluminum angle which will be used to mount on the bottom of the table and will be used to attach the leg. Now I'll be showing the steps and construction of the extension tables that will be described in detail in this video. I begin with the bandsaw tabletop. A custom machine aluminum angle iron is attached to the edge of the bandsaw table with the top edge of the channel level with the top surface of the bandsaw table. This will require drilling and tapping holes in the edge of the bandsaw table. Next the first MDF table top is attached, followed by the second MDF table top. The bottom MDF table top does have a dado cut in its base, one eighth of an inch deep, the same thickness as the aluminum angle iron. These two MDF tables have the corner cut out in order for my AccuSlice system to mount on the bandsaw. The MDF table tops are attached to the aluminum rail with some 1 quarter inch diameter flathead screws. Another smaller MDF board is attached under the two MDF tables. This board is used to give additional support to the tables in the area where I cut out the corners of the two MDF tables. All the MDF boards are clamped together with flathead screws. Finally I will be attaching a small angle iron to the bottom edge of the tables 
which will be used to attach the supporting leg for the extension tables. This drawing shows the front edge construction of the assembly with the dado cut in the bottom MDF board and the attachment of the reinforcing board under the cutout corner of the extension table. This is a drawing of the construction of the aluminum angle iron which attaches to the side of the bandsaw table and supports the two MDF table tops. For my construction I actually made this angle iron a little bit shorter but one can make it longer if a wider table top was required. The material for this angle iron can be purchased from McMaster Car. This drawing shows the dimensions of the table tops that I made for my system. I decided to make my table top 12 inches wide by 22 inches long which will accommodate my 5 foot rail on my AccuSlice system. But one can make the table tops longer or wider depending on your requirements. I chose to make it as small as possible so it will be easy to get around the bandsaw to service and operate the bandsaw. My previous prototype was 25 inches long to use with a 6 foot rail but in my shop I normally use the 5 foot rail so I made it shorter. I also round out the corners on the MDF table top again to make it easier to get around the bandsaw. For design of the tables if you are not attaching the AccuSlice system one can make tables without the corners cut out. If you're using a bandsaw fence the design will need to be modified to allow for the fence and the fence rail support. Here is a quick viewing of the assembly process which will be described in this video. This is my parts list for my Laguna 1412 bandsaw. If you're using this on a different bandsaw, the design and parts list may need to change. I begin by machining the aluminum angle irons. The 1.5 inch by 2.5 inch by 1/8 inch thick aluminum angle irons can be purchased from McMaster Car. I first cut it to the 16 inch lengths that I required using my horizontal bandsaw. I then completed the machining on my mini mill. First of all cutting a 1 inch wide by 3/8 inch deep slot on the upright arm to align with the miter bar slot on my bandsaw. I then drilled a series of 1 quarter inch diameter holes in the aluminum angle iron to permit it to be attached to the bandsaw table and also to permit the MDF boards to be attached. I already had two holes drilled and tapped on my tabletop from my previous system so I used those same two holes to attach the aluminum angle iron to the tabletop. What I do is line this angle iron such that when you're pushing a board through it doesn't catch the lip. So this angle iron needs to be at or just a hair below the tabletop. If it sticks up, you're going to catch it as you're pushing a board through. So I have it just, it's maybe, you know, two or three thousandths below the tabletop. And then the entire length. So I have these two edges uh, bolted in. This I put a clamp on to hold it in place. And I prefer drilling and tapping uh, to hold it. And I can do that on these holes. But these holes where the board's going to be are in the way. So I want to have, if I want to make this portable, like take it off and on, I want to put a, a through hole through that and put a bolt in the back. But these two I can uh, drill and tap because my, my, my table's only going to be this wide. It's not going to go beyond this bolt. I then use the two holes in the angle iron as a guide to drill the two holes in the bandsaw tabletop. Since I'll be tapping these holes, I'm using a number seven drill. I then remove the clamp and loosen and remove the two screws holding the angle iron in place and then tap the holes with a quarter 20 thread per inch tap. I then reattach the angle iron to the bandsaw tabletop using some 1 quarter inch 20 thread per inch machine screws. When installing the two MDF tabletops, I want the MDF table to be tight against the aluminum angle iron with no gap to eliminate a dust catching area. I also want to be able to quickly remove the MDF tables with the angle irons from the bandsaw without having first to remove the MDF boards. The front corners of the MDF boards will be cut out to accommodate my AccuSlice system. Therefore this first screw will not interfere with the table alignment. My MDF tables are 12 inches wide. Therefore the two screws on the right also will not interfere with the table alignment. However the center screw does interfere with the alignment of the table and also interferes with removing the tables and angle iron from the bandsaw. I could choose to eliminate this screw and the attachment of the angle irons would probably be fine. In order to use this screw, 
I do not want a tapped hole. Instead, I want a one-quarter inch diameter drilled through hole to enable the use of a standard one-quarter inch machine screw with a nut attached to the end of the screw under the bandsaw table. This will enable the removal of the angle iron without needing to first remove the MDF tables. I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole the whole way through with a quarter inch bit. And I'll put a screw and a nut in the back. That's the brackets done. Now we're ready to start working on the tables. This is the material I was thinking of using originally for building this. Uh, instead of being eighth inch thick, it's a quarter inch thick. And what I could have done with this is I could have drilled holes and use these flat top screws, you know, and countersunk them, that there'd be no screw sticking above, it'd be perfectly flat. But this material is like three times more expensive, and it has a rounded edge, but this has a flat edge. But I chose not to use it because it is more expensive and has the rounded top edge. So this will be the table, and I can cut out a little indentation for those nuts so that the board can go you know, flat up like this. So then I'll make some adjustments for that as I go along. So I need to drill holes, three holes, to mount the, uh, the table on. In order for the anti slice system to fit with the pieces that go down below the table, this corner has to be cut out. For the uh, tables, I've been debating whether to use uh, two sheets of MDF or to use one sheet of plywood, three quarter inch plywood, and one sheet of MDF. Uh, MDF is fairly heavy. And I thought by going to a, a piece of plywood underneath, it cut the weight a little bit. So the thought right now is to uh, use two sheets, one of three-quarter inch plywood, one of three-quarter three quarter inch MDF, and eventually these will be glued together, and they'll go under like that. And I do have to count, uh, make a, a, a dado for this eighth of an inch. This is a, it's one and three-quarter inches, excuse me, this is one and a half inches total, including this eighth inch. So by putting an eight, one-eighth inch dado in the bottom of here, this will be perfectly flush with the top of my bandsaw table. There's numerous ways to cut this dado in the board, which would be an eighth of an inch thick by about an inch and a half wide. I could use my router, but it would take me some time to get it set up and adjust it. I could use a table saw, you know, cutting on edge. Uh, for me, the easiest way is to use my radial arm saw. This radial arm saw is about 15 years old. It's one of my very first tools. It still works all the time. So I have adjusted to cut about an eighth of an inch. So here's my data, which is an eighth of an inch thick. Go over this rim. And I did mark the place where my two screws are here. And I just took a file and just filed it in a little bit. So this will be flush now. I then use a small clamp to clamp the plywood board in the correct alignment position. Well, I cut my notches out in both tables around at both corners. Uh, so the next thing I do is glue these boards together so they're permanent. And then I'll mount them. And there's the table. Two pieces glued together and sand it even. And this gets on here like this. Next thing is to put the, uh, the leg on. And the leg I made these angle brackets, the screw in here and then the, with the wing nut, the legs attached so you can take it off and on easily. Uh, I, I made this out of aluminum and I put an adjustment on it because I'm going to be taking this to trade shows. So I need to be able to adjust it uh, for the floor of the trade shows. But normally I just make this out of a, you know, a piece of oak wood stick. You, know, you don't need to make it anything metal. So a piece of wood would be fine. So this is ready to attach to here like this now. piece of my design. In my previous one I had a rail going underneath. And the rail went underneath here, underneath the table. And I could use that and, like when I move the leg, it would give the table some support. It's like a fulcrum over here. So I'm doing the same thing here. And my first thought was just to make it big enough to go into the rail here and screw everything and just make the table stronger. But I think it should be longer going underneath the table. And if I'm underneath the table I can always put a 
maybe a, a set screw here or one of those a screw inserts and a screw and I can use it to act like a fulcrum over here to adjust so when I take the leg off the table it gives it some support you know it won't fall down because this will support the inside underneath the table so I think that's what I'm going to make these a little bit longer uh, but it does serve to you know tie this table and make up for this cutout that I did here but it needs to be bigger yeah, I just drilled the holes uh, to mount it on the table here and I'm using a uh, flathead screw so I did countersink the, uh, the holes. I'm using some quarter inch flathead uh, machine screws to attach the table to the angle iron and then using nuts to attach it in place. with four bolts there. So it actually has to come out. With everything aligned and clamped in place, I then drill the appropriate holes and insert the uh, flathead quarter inch 20 thread per inch screws and then screw everything together. I put the other table on in the same manner I did this one, and that pretty much completes the system. Uh, much less bulk than the previous system. I got rid of the heavy metal frame, that's all gone. It's all made out of uh, MDF and some plywood. Uh, it is three inches shorter than the previous one, and I rounded off the corners. So that makes it much easier you know, to get around here, let the service to change by bandsaw blades. So it's just easier to get around it. So I'll, I'll be testing this next uh, to see you know, if it performs like the other one did. The other one did a great job on reducing vibration. My extended tables are all installed, and the first thing I need to do is make sure they're perfectly level. So I get a straight edge, and I just make sure that they're perfectly level, especially out here and here. The other thing I watch is when I'm going through with the board, I want to make sure the board doesn't hit this edge on my table. You know, it's maybe two or three thousandths below the top of the surf table, but uh, it's perfect. And if the table's off, you can adjust the legs, you know, make them shorter or longer, just perfectly flat. But this is all flat, ready to go. So next I'm installing my AccuSlice. And these parts that go below the table there is a the reason I had these cutouts. So this fits in there like that perfectly. And then I uh, lock the table on the bandsaw. So I do make sure the table is centered uh, in these two uh, cutouts. And of course it's attached to the table now. And this should slide in nicely all the way to the bandsaw blade. So the next thing is the rail. Now the one issue with this system is this table for the AccuSlice is a quarter of an inch above the tabletop. Now I could have made these tables a quarter inch higher, but then I couldn't use this for ripping boards, and I want to use it for ripping boards also. So I have to make an adaption here for my rail. So I get on my rails, I attached a quarter inch piece of aluminum, you could also use you know, plywood, but just something to bring this uh, rail down a quarter of an inch. So now when it sits on the table, you know, the rail is perfectly flat with this table. But those pieces, now in this case, I made about a quarter inch aluminum, the same width as the rail, and I countersunk the holes and used some uh, half inch you know, countersunk uh, nut or screws and bolted it to there so that these are flat with the table. And then when I installed it, it's perfectly flat on the bandsaw table. And you can see that that doesn't budge at all. It's perfectly flat on my table. I next use the three screws to attach the rail to the AccuSlice table. I'm going to be showing two applications of this system. Uh, first of all, I'll be putting my uh, AccuSled 2 on here to cut some thin slices of the boards, but I'll also be doing some ripping using this long rail as my uh, bandsaw fence. And by having a long rail, I get a much more accurate cut on my uh, boards. 
So first of all, let's uh, put the uh, AccuSlice 2 rail on here, and we'll attach a board here, and we'll see how it works. So this is my 5-foot rail, and I can cut boards up to 36 inches long with this 5-foot rail. The uh, AccuSlice 2 actually overhangs the table a couple inches because it has five older bearings. So I actually cut boards you know, out this far past the end of the bandsaw table. So I have a piece of maple here. Uh, this maple is about one inch thick, and I'll be attaching it to my... So next I drill some holes in the uh, MDF sacrificial fence, and then use some um, particle board screws to attach it to the brackets on the AccuSled too. I actually did use eight screws to attach the uh, MDF board to the AccuSled 2 carriage. After the board's attached to the AccuSled 2 carriage, I do make sure that it slides freely and doesn't bind. And I normally, uh, first of all, set my gauge to zero. And I'll be cutting off a piece of scrap wood just to give me a flat parallel surface. So that's against the board. not perfectly straight so let me uh, cut off a board first of all I do one full turn for the curve of the blade and then one additional turn will give me 50 thousandths of an inch and that should level out the board now what I'll be watching for is the vibration out here when I didn't have these tables I got a lot of vibration on the ends of the rails and as a result I've got uh, you know not the, not the smoothest cuts I got a lot of vibration in my cuts so let me uh, see how this works and we'll watch the vibration on the ends of the rail. In the upper right hand corner is an enlargement of the end of the rail, showing there's almost no vibration on the end of the rail as the board's being cut. This board is only three quarters of an inch thick. And ideally I should have used a 10 teeth per inch blade, but this blade is eight teeth per inch. It's a half inch blade, eight teeth per inch. But I get an even smoother cut if I went to a 10 teeth per inch blade. So next I want to release my mag jigs, one full revolution, the curve of my blade, and then let's cut a board 25 thousandths of an inch thick. And as I'm cutting, I'm cutting slowly. The slower you cut, the smoother the cut. Next, I'll check the accuracy of my board. And I have 27 and a half thousandths. 28 thousandths, 28 thousandths, 27 thousandths, and then 28 thousandths. So it's perfectly straight and parallel. I don't know if you can see the uh, surface on this. It's uh, pretty smooth. Like I said, if I went to a 10 teeth per inch blade, it'd even be smoother. So let me go and cut another board. In this board, I'm going to cut 10 thousandths of an inch thick. So that's one revolution for the curve of the blade. And then five, 10 thousandths. So this strip now is uh, 36 inches long by about one inch wide and you know 10 to 15 thousand inch thick. So let's uh, put a gauge on it and measure it, see where we end up. We got 11 thousandths, 12 thousandths, 12 thousandths, 12 thousandths, and 12 thousandths. So that's where it's basically 12 thousand inch thick and perfectly straight and parallel. And there's no burn marks on the surface. Perfectly smooth. And of course, since it's so thin, it's very, very flexible. So next I want to rip some boards on a bandsaw using a system. I had to take off my AccuSlice 2. And I no longer have a fence on my bandsaw. I had to take it off in order for the AccuSlice system to fit. But I can use this edge of the rail as a fence. I'll just be working on the off of the side of the blade pushing against the fence and then pushing it through the blade. So the board I'm cutting, this is about two inches thick, four inches wide, and I want to cut it, you know, basically in half. And to hold the board flat against the rail, 
I like using these things. That keeps it against the, uh, the rail so it doesn't move on me. So I'm using this, I said using this rail as my fence. I'm pushing the board against the rail and then pushing it through the bandsaw blade. Okay, this bar was 39 inches long. I cut it about two inches to an eighth inch wide. And what made the system nice, as I got to the end of the table here, the board didn't fall off. When I was cutting boards previously, I tried to rip a long board on the bandsaw table. And as I was doing it, it tipped off, and I found myself reaching back here to try and keep it from falling down. Uh, but that goes away with this system, so it supports the board nicely as it comes off the bandsaw. And again, this is a half inch wide blade, eight teeth per inch. And that's our cut on that board. Again, perfectly straight. Now to remove the, the extension tables from the bandsaw, you can do two different things. First of all, let me uh, take off my copy slice system. to remove the table from your bandsaw. The easiest way is just to remove these three screws, these two here and this one here, and the whole table will come off, leaving the aluminum uh, angle iron in place. So just one, two, three, and the table comes off. The other option is to remove these two screws, which are tapped in the table, and then there's one more screw in the center here, which has a nut underneath the table, which you need to take off. But the easiest way to take it off is just to remove these three screws, and that's what I'll probably be doing in the future, leaving the angle iron in place and just taking the table off here. Well that completes the assembly of these extension tables for my bandsaw with an in-feed and out-feed table. So the tables are flush with the top of my bandsaw table and I have a cutout here for my AccuSlice system. But if you're using this for, you know, um, without the AccuSlice system you just leave these pieces in, in place and of course you need to do a, put a dado in here for the miter bar slot in your boards. But the system worked quite well, the vibration was almost nothing on the end. It worked almost as good as my previous system. My previous system was a little more bulky, so I think it may have been a little more, um, more stable, a little less vibration, but this, this works fine. It's good enough for my applications. And I made these tables 22 inches long, which is designed for my five foot AccuSlice rail. I don't normally don't use a six foot rail, but I could always just let it overhang six inches, or I can make longer tables if I wanted to. But in general, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the system. It works quite well. I can use it both for the AccuSlice system for you know, cutting boards accurately, and I can also use it for ripping boards on a bandsaw. So that completes this installation and description of the extension tables for the bandsaw. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, please give us a call or drop us an email. We'd be glad to hear from you.